bless you, God bless you, God bless you. We give honor to God, our Father, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to his sweet Holy Spirit. We bless the name of our God and his Son. We thank God for being here again for just our space in this building. Thank God again for our pastor, Bishop Nesbitt. And I am not just, I'm not just saying that all of the dancing and shouting you were doing, you were giving it to the Lord, but it's always good to see somebody come back when they have not been feeling well. It's always good to see somebody bounce back, so we just thank God for her. I also thank God for the mentors in my life, and I'm not saying this because she's here, because I said it before. I think not too often, but often enough to remind me of the five mentors in my life. Uh, Reverend David Jordan, my first pastor. Sister Dorothy Witherspoon. Pastor Hattie Carlton, Bishop Geraldine Bailey, and Bishop Mary S. Nesbitt, who I've been with the longest. I believe in my heart that they have made me who I am today. But it's just good to be here. And I'm not thinking about being here rather than in the grave. I'm not thinking about that. Because I hear it all the time and I don't remark. People say it's better to be on this side than on the other side. But for years now, I don't think that's necessarily true. At least for me, because I've seen too many hard times. And I know on that side, it will be over. So I thank God for being here. I thank God for this moment. And I seem a little probably a little cumbersome this morning because technology has its way of making things easy and then it has its way of making things hard. Been having some problems with my Wi-Fi uh, company and I had all my notes all scrabbled and then I tried to put them together and, and uh, type them on the computer and then send them to the printer and bring my papers. See, I'm used to flipping pages and not scrolling. So I bought my Mac Air, I bought my iPad, and my phone. <laughs> and I still tried to send it to the printer back there, and it wouldn't go. So we just thank God for who he is and our place in the building today. I do want to emphasize again the, uh, the service we're going to have, uh, Iron Sharpens Iron. I've been listening to these guys on YouTube last week a little bit. As a matter of fact, the gentleman that's coming is Brother Dwight's high's oldest brother. And uh, I visited their church uh, many years ago, and they have a very good program on there to help men uh, in whatever area of their life that they need help because men do sharpen, sharpen iron. So we're going to get right into the lesson. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 6. And this is coming from the Weymouth New Testament transliteration. I may seem like I'm doing a Bible study. And that's okay, because I'm comfortable with who I am now. Matthew chapter 6. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, may thy name be kept holy. Let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done. As in earth, so, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us today our bread for the day. And forgive us our shortcomings as we also have forgiven those who have failed in their duty toward us. 
and bring us not into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Verse 10 says, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done in heaven, so on earth. Make this happen. To make this happen is the very first thing to do is to pray. Father, we thank you again for who you are. We bless your holy, wonderful, and magnificent name. You're a God, and besides you, there is no other God. My prayer today is that we all receive what you would have us. Let us be endowed with your word and your spirit, that we may carry this for the rest of our lives, that we might be an influence to those who walk in darkness. In Jesus' name we ask, amen, and thank God. It's good sometimes to have a theme that reaches a particular audience. The theme, though pointed toward men, should be convincing to the target, targeted listener. In this case, it's men. Our theme today says all men should pray without ceasing with the knowledge that prayer changes things. To encourage men in our time as leaders, in the home is difficult because homes are manless and a female is the leader. The church also poses the same problem. Reverend Jordan used to say that God called men to preach and some won't go, so he called women. Some of them won't go, so he calls children. So as we encourage the men today and believe God to answer their prayers, we will attempt to encourage the women and children also. Our thought today is, Lord, you've heard it many times before. Lord, teach us how to pray. First, the position we need to take when we learn to pray is to first get to know God. Many of us think we know Donald Trump. We only know what we heard about Donald Trump. We think we know Joe Biden. But many of us only heard what they want us to know about Joe Biden. Some are true and some are false. But we really don't know them. And sometimes when you hear something over and over and over and over, you tend to lean toward what they're saying is the truth. There is a commercial that comes on television about some insurance company, Jonathan Lawson. You've seen that commercial? He said, I don't care how old you are, all you got to do is pay $9.99, $9.95. What if I'm 75 nine? What if I'm 85 $9.95? But what you don't know about insurance is insurance are sold in units. So the 995 is for one unit. And their unit is $695. So if you pay that 995 for 20 years, you don't almost paid the $695. Now, if you buy two units, that's $1,200. But that's still $20. If you buy three units, it goes on and on and on and on. So sometimes we hear, but we are not really, really listening. So in order to pray to God, you, we really got to know him. Not what we heard somebody else testify, but we heard somebody else say, but we have to pray until we get to know who God really is. Some of y'all know my brother this past, and for the first time, I attended a grievance support group. And the reason I attended that is because they found out if I'm normal. Because when my sister died, I just kept moving. When my father died, I kept moving. 
When my mother died, I kept moving. When my brother died, I'm still moving now. So I was wondering, maybe something ain't right with me. So I went to find out, was something wrong with me? But they explained to me that everybody grieves differently, and nobody is wrong in how they grieve. But one thing that happened in that support group, they had a video, and one young guy came up there, and I, I, I wrote down what I could remember, remember what he said. And uh, they were talking about how people say crazy, stupid things. And he said that some people were trying to console him, and they told him, give it time. Some say, stay busy. Some say, uh, you'll get over it. He said, and some even gave me a scripture. And I'm thinking like, if you, and he said he was a believer. I'm thinking like, if you're a believer, if nothing else works, you ought to want to have a scripture. So I don't know whether he really knows God like he says. Because the scriptures, according to the Bible, according to God's word, gives us strength. In a time of weakness. Maybe he couldn't see it. Maybe he just wasn't, he just wasn't thinking. I said, wow. How many of us today, if we made a list of our prayers and placed them in two columns, one said answered prayers and the other said unanswered prayers. The best reason I can think of that will cause the answered prayer to have the most, you would have to know the person you're praying to. Because you've got confidence in that person to answer your prayers. And if your column that had unanswered prayers is more than the one with the answered prayers, maybe you should go back and listen to the soliloquy that Bishop Macmillan preached last week about disappointed prayers. I say soliloquy because I think that he preached it to himself before he preached it to us. Maybe you should go back and, and listen to that message. But you got to know the person you're praying to. You got to know them to the core to get your prayers answered. John 5 and 7, we all know it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. We knew what our parents would do for us and we knew what they would not do for us. Your mama and your daddy told you so many times, yes and no, yes and no, yes and no. You knew what to ask for. And if you knew that maybe they changed their mind, you might try, try them anyway just to see if they changed their mind. You ask them and the answer was the same answer. So you got to know the person that you're praying to just like you know your parents that that would give you the same answer every time. We first have to know the person that we're praying to. God wants us to learn how to pray. He wants me to learn how to pray. And when I learn how to pray, the more I get to know him, I'll learn how to pray, and I'll know what to ask for and what not to ask for. So why should we pray? I told you all this is going to be a Bible lesson. Why does God want us to pray? When we pray, listen to this closely. When we pray, we participate. And we join hands with God to bring his will in the earth. When we pray, we join hands with God to bring his will in the earth. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he told us to pray, let thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. So the only way God's will is going to get in the earth, we got to pray for it to come down. So we're joining hands with God. We pray for the sick all the time. James 5, 13 and 16 says this, is, is any afflicted, let him do what? Let him pray. 
because God wants you healed in the earth. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you might be healed. God has already sent healing to us. We have to let his will that is done for us in heaven be in the earth. And this only comes when we know the one we are praying to. Is any afflicted? Let him do what? Let him pray. Let him pray. If you're sick, call for the elders of the church and let them pray. Because healing is already provided. It's as if it's in heaven. It's really not in heaven. But it's as if it's in heaven, in a, in a, a place place. But God wants it to be in the earth. So God is trying to teach us how to pray. We got to know who we're praying to. We got to know what his will is so we'll know what to pray for. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain for the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again in the earth sent the heavens sent the rain we participate and join hands with God when we pray listen to God's response when he acknowledges Solomon's prayer Solomon prayed after he built the temple and he said God if these certain particular things happen when people look this way when they look this way I want you to answer their prayer and hear them and listen to God speaking to Solomon in a vision, in a dream. We hear it all the time. Second Chronicles 7, 14. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place for myself for a house of sacrifice. And then God said, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face. I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sin. And heal their land. The prayer join hands with heaven. To make God's will be done in the earth. And the only way God's will is going to come on the earth. We got to pray for it. But we got to know what his will is. And to know what his will is, we got to know who he is and understand what his word has taught us. Genesis 18.32. Listen. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. This is Abraham talking. And I will speak yet this once. Per adventure... Ten shall be found. And listen what the Lord said. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. I will not destroy it for ten's sake. But it was God's will. It was God's will to destroy the wicked that won't repent, but not the righteous along with them. So Abraham was trying to bring the will of God into the earth. But if he could have found Ten people there, God would not have destroyed the land. But God knew. God even knew that if he did not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the wickedness would have spread like a disease. It was his will to get rid of that infectious disease in that city that could have spread it throughout all the earth at that time. Thirdly. 
How should we pray? We should pray knowing what the will of the Lord is. Knowing what the will of the, I prayed a long time ago, back in the, it was probably 1980 when the prosperity gospel began to just go all over the earth. I prayed for God to give me a Cadillac. Oh, I believe I could have the best. I prayed and I fasted and I lo- I'm trusting God for giving me that Cadillac. I was working at Dorothea Dix Hospital, making eleven hundred dollars a month, taking home eight hundred dollars a month. Had a wife and four children, and if God would have gave me a Cadillac, all of us would have to would have to sleep in the car. <laughs> now he could have gave me a miracle, but I think he wanted me to pay for it. I think he probably wanted me to pay for it because you can't get everything free. Can't get everything free. So we got to know what the will of the Lord is. James 4 and 3 says, you ask and receive not because you pray amiss. That means we pray improperly. We pray wrongly that we might consume it upon our lusts and our desires. So that's why many of our prayers do not get answered. And what in that Cadillac? It was it was a desire. It was a kind of a lust thing because everybody else was getting fancy cars. I didn't want that car necessarily, but I wanted one like that that I could call mine. But I I, I just didn't need one at that time. So when I went to get one about four or five years ago, we just went in there and talked to the loan officer and got it. Thank God for my wife back there. Let me take a pause. She's been with me 52, I think, maybe 52 or 53, one of them. She held up two fingers, so it's two. We got married. I was 21. She was 17. I went. Her, I took her to my favorite uh, store, Holes Foods Market, and she never goes with me. And when we do go, she doesn't. She stays in the car. And I took her inside. and I introduced her to this cashier that I see all the time. And uh, he said, "Oh, you robbed the cradle, didn't you?" <laughs> okay, we back to the message now. <laughs> now, when you know who God is. When you know who God is, John 5, 1 John, I'm sorry, 1 John 5 and 14. I know this about heart, but I'm going to read it. And this is the confidence, the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, we have the petitions that we desire of him. You got to know who you're praying to. You can't just talk about him. You got to know who he really is. You got to almost know what his answer going to be even before you ask. And when we ask according to his will, honestly, we know just about what he's going to say. We just need to join hands with him and bring his will in the earth in our lives. Verily I say unto you, John 6, 23, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it to you. When you know what the Bible says, you know what, what God's thoughts are. You know what his thoughts are. So you know exactly what to ask and what not to ask. We, God is trying to teach us how to pray, how to really pray, how to join hands with him, how to participate with him to bring his will in the earth. I told you I was comfortable with myself. When I preach or teach, I call both of them the same. Most of the time, people are listening. Well, that's what I've always wanted, for you to listen. Because I want you to remember next Wednesday what I said today. 
if not all of it, one thing that may come up in your life you might remember. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, Jesus said, I will do it. When God says something, get this, when God says something, it's forever. It is forever. His word is unchanging. So once he says it, it's forever. So although we were born in the future or in time, God has already said some things that are still working for those that are born in time. Once God has every word God has ever spoken is forever. It will never go away. It will always exist. It will always be eternal. What happens when you pray and join hands with God and pray according to the will of God? One thing that happens is this. When you pray according to God's will, mountains move. When you pray according to God's word, the mountain that is in your life will move. He said, come before the throne of grace boldly that you might receive grace to help in the time of need or in the time of trouble. Mountains move. There was a mountain standing in the front of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But listen to what they said, and I put it in my terms. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked up to the king, stood six inches from his face, and said to the king, Oh, king, oh, king, our God will deliver us from your hands. Let me tell you one thing. If he didn't, we still would not bow. You got to be just as bad as the devil is. The devil come up in your face, you get right back up in his face and tell him what the word of the Lord says. Tell him what the will of God is. And you have prayed to your God and he is your deliverer. Can't back up from the devil. I remember in conversations when I was younger, I don't know what they say now. If someone made a remark to somebody and they made a remark back to somebody else, we would say, pressure. Or if somebody made a remark, smart remark to somebody, and somebody uh, outdid them, they say, oh, you scored 1,000. You got to be just as bold as the devil is. Just as bold as he is. Another thing that happens when you pray according to God's will, demons tremble. I'm, listen to me. Demons tremble. The devil, if there's any in here now, he's trembling. And I'm not just saying that, speculating. The devil is trembling when God's word is going forth because he knows that if we get this in our heart, he's getting ready to get out of our life, out of our way, and he will not have the dominance over us that he had before we came into this place. Demons tremble. When Jesus walked into the church one day into the tabernacle, as soon as he walked in, the Bible said the demon and the man said, oh, Jesus of Nazareth. He was trembling. I know who you are, the Holy One that comes from God. Have you come here to torment before the time? I was a young Christian. And I wasn't too shy or too bashful to talk about the Lord, but went by these guys, I spoke to them, and I witnessed to them. They were standing on the corner, three of them. I witnessed to them about five minutes, and I went to where I was going to the store and came back. And on my way back, I was walking on the same side of the sidewalk. And I kind of felt like, well, maybe I shouldn't walk on this side because I just talked to them. And I said, I'm going to walk on this side anyway. I walked on this side. I got about 30 feet from them, and they left. The devil knows the God that is in you. He knows the God that is in you. The demons tremble. When you pray according to the will of God, demons tremble. Not only that, when you pray according to God's will, the Red Sea that are in your life divide, and you can walk on dry land when you pray according to God's will. Pray according to God. God has delivered us from so many things, and all we have to do is look at God's track record. 
And whatever you may be facing today, I'm here to tell you God will bring you through it. We just need to pray according to his will, join hands with him, and bring his will into the earth. I've been listening to Paul Tillich's uh, The Courage to Be audio over and over and over and over. And now I got the courage to be. I got the courage to be, to be whatever God has called me to be. You need the courage to be whatever God has called you to do, to do whatever God has called you to do, to face whatever God has called you to face in this life that you might know him even more and more and more and more. This is why Jesus could have so much confidence as he walked on the earth because he knew his father like no other. He knew his father was always with him. He knew his father's will. That's why he could do what he did. That's why he could face the devils the way he faced them. That's why he could talk to the devil and put him in his place. And we can do the same thing if we learn how to pray. If we just learn how to pray, first we got to learn how to pray. First, it's we need to position ourselves to know God. We need to position ourselves to know God. We need to position our minds. That's what attitude means. Attitude means to bend the mind, to bend the mind in a certain direction. We need to position our thinking toward praying. And the only way we're going to learn how to pray, we got to practice how to pray. Anything you ever practice over and over again, you got better at it. So if you don't know how to pray, keep on praying. And the more you pray, the more you'll learn God's ways and know his ways and understand when God is speaking to us. Second thing. Why should we pray? Because when we pray, we join hands with God. We join hands with God. I don't, rem I don't know what this picture uh, is saying that I've seen so many times. There's one hand going up and there's another hand coming down, grabbing that hand. We need to join hands with heaven. Understand God's will. Know what God's will is and ask God for it in your life and in this earth. And God has to bring it to pass because he promised that he would. Third, we should pray knowing what the will of the Lord is. And that only comes from reading the Bible. Reading the Bible and praying about what you read and talking to others and getting, ex getting it explained to you better. And your eyes will be opened. Your eyes will be opened just like your eyes were opened when you first knew who Jesus was as Lord and Savior. I don't know about you, but I didn't know I was even in darkness till I got saved. And I saw how dark, how dark it was from the place I came. How dark it was from the place that I came. And lastly, the fourth thing is what happens. This is what happens when we join hands with God. And know his will. And to bring his will into the earth. In our lives. There are some of us here today. I'm facing some things. And you're facing some things. When I look at people. Or persons. Every time I teach or preach God's word. It takes God. To look at all of our lives. And all of our situations. In order to handle. Each and every one. God is more than magnificent. He's more than magnificent. I think sometimes about the millions of cars just in the United States of America with millions of radios, with, with thousands of radio stations and millions of people listening to all of those radio stations and God knows who's listening to what station all together at one time. What kind of God is this? He's a God like no other. A God, how can anybody know how many grains of sand it takes to make the earth? And how many metric million killion tons of water there is in the seas and the oceans? But he knows it all. He knows all of the stars and all of the galaxies. 
this is a God like no other. He's a God that speaks something, and when he speaks it one time, it is forever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. God cannot take that back. He can't take it back because it's not his nature to take back anything that he's ever said. And you're much more like him than what you imagine. Whatever you say, it can't come back either. He might not do what you wanted to do, but it cannot come back. Heavenly Father, you're so great and so mighty and so awesome. Webster cannot find words to really express how we feel or how we can say it where you'll be satisfied. So we just say, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable. Father, these are your people. We are your people. You know what we're facing. You know what we're going through. You know how we're dealing with it. And you know how we should deal with it. But our prayer today is to help us to be able to join the hands with heaven. Help us, Lord, to understand perfectly what your word says and what your word means. That we can experience God's will in the earth in our lives, and in the lives of, the, of others that we love and others that we touch. I pray, God, that your word that has gone forth today be accepted and be received in our hearts. That from this day forward, we will begin to exercise our prayer life. We begin to exercise our prayers and stay with you more often Pray during the day, at night, in the morning, at lunch, in the bathroom, that we will begin to know our God and know his way. That we will know, understand his will and know what his will is for us in the earth. That we might be able to love you and serve you and be a light in the world and be a light in our home and to be a light, oh God, on our jobs, to be a light everywhere in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That others will know, even before we utter a word, that they will know that there's something different about her. There's something different about him. I can't understand it. I don't know what it is. But, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said ask in Jesus' name. I know that's according to your will. And we're asking in his name that you would endow us with a spirit to pray. That you would give us the courage, Father, in the name of Jesus, to put aside things, to, to put aside things that can wait to pray in Jesus' holy name. That we, Father, from this moment on, will make it our priority to pray. Whether it's a short prayer, a long prayer, a medium-sized prayer, an oral prayer, a prayer in our heart, a, a prayer in our, when we're silent. But help us, God, to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you. Because you taught your disciples in our prayer, you gave us in the model prayer, you said to ask the Father, our Father, our Father, let your will be done on the earth just as it is in the heavens. But the only way we're going to know your will is if we pray and get an understanding of what your word is saying to us. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, if anybody is sick in your body, just stand before the Lord. Just come before this, our, our, this altar and stand before the Lord. If you got a sickness in your body, we know what the will of the Lord is. We know what the will of God is. His will is for us to be healed. His will is for us to be delivered. His will is for us to be free. His will is for us to, I know it's God's will. I know it's God's will. I know it's God's will. I know it's his will for us to be healed, for us to be delivered, for us to be set free. It is the will of God. It is the will of God. God promised us 70 years, 
And by reason of good health, 80 years. By reason of good health, 80 years. He wouldn't have said by reason of good health if he didn't want us to have some health. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just anoint them with some oil, if you will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God knows everything. God knows everything. He knows everything. He knows our tomorrow, just like our yesterday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. 